Hey guys, we're right here in Portland, Oregon. We're testing out the Silverback Marine Grizzly. It's powered by twin Photon Marine electric outboards. It's a work boat, it's a tough work boat, solid aluminum, super solid boat. We're gonna get on board, we're gonna check it out. Come on, let's get started. So this boat right here uh, is made by Silverback Marine in Tacoma, Washington. It's a 24 foot uh, aluminum work boat. It's the Grizzly. Uh, it's powered by two of our motors, uh, the P300s, which uh, have a peak of 300 horsepower and continuous of 150. Uh, so I'm Marcelino Alvarez, and I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Photon Marine. And at Photon, we're building the world's most powerful and intelligent electric outboard motor system tailored specifically to commercial boat fleets. So we started Photon Marine to, to go after the commercial uh, boat space and, and, and decarbonize those vessels. For us, uh, we see opportunities for marine propulsion starting with commercial boat builders and commercial customers. Those customers uh, use their boats day in, day out, their tools. Uh, for them, the transition to electric propulsion is an economic decision, not an emotional one. Uh, you see payback periods within a couple of years for the commercial customers because right now they're spending uh, quite a bit on fuel. Uh, they're hitting the annual and three-year maintenance windows for uh, outboard motors uh, every six weeks or so because they're just using their system so much. Uh, and so for them, it's, it's a no-brainer uh, to be able to switch to uh, a cleaner, quieter propulsion system that also happens to be uh, cheaper to own over its lifetime. All right, guys, so I'm at the helm of the Silverback Marine Grizzly. It's powered by the twin Photon Marine 300 outboards. First thing I can tell you is, you know, this is a work boat. It, it's set up to basically be, be most efficient for working. Um, if we take a look behind us at the, the tow post, one of the things I noticed right away is with other outboard boats that I've driven, uh, you have these two massive outboards. You you kind of lose sight of what's directly behind you. That really incredible thing about these low profile outboards is if I'm backing up to tow or or recover something or, or come straight up behind us, I can see everything. I can see basically uh, everything behind me. Um, we have a, a really nice closed cabin. All right, so the way they have these throttles set up is when you go one click forward, it puts the engine or the puts the motor excuse me about 150 rpms so you get some forward motion you get some forward momentum kind of similar to how a, a gas boat is uh, set up so i'm going to put both of these in forward and let's uh let's get some acceleration going so we're pointed down river yeah so what i really like is this boat has plenty of power, especially with the twin engines. You get all that, you get extra acceleration, gets up on plane really nicely. Yeah, there's no lack of power in this boat. I also wanted to try something new for our boat tests and get an idea of real world power consumption. So I asked the captain to get the boat up at the lowest efficient planing speed so we could take a look at the speed and how many kilowatts it was consuming. Willamette River here has about a three knot current, so I asked the captain to go up river and then again down river. In the upbound direction, we made 21 knots using 110 kilowatts. And going downbound, we made 21 knots using 106 kilowatts. That gives us an average of 108 kilowatts, and if we divide that by our speed, it gives us an average of using five kilowatts per knot. Considering that this boat has a 126 kilowatt hour battery, that gives us a real world range of about 25 nautical miles, which is in line with the industry benchmarks for planing electric boats. So, so you guys, this boat feels super solid. It's uh, one of the nice thing about electric boats is you have extra weight in the batteries is is weight good in a boat it can be if it's if it's balanced properly like it is in this boat uh you have excellent maneuverability it also kind of cuts it can allow the boat to cut through any kind of chop or any kind of weather you have uh rather than in a light boat kind of weather or water throwing you around uh with the weight of this boat it just kind of punches through any any kind of water that that might throw you around a bit so this is powder coat aluminum. It's super solid. You look everywhere, you see thick welds. Looking around this boat, you see it's totally set up like a work boat. Everywhere you look, you have these super solid, big, hefty cleats. Uh, looks like you can 
do a side toe pretty easily. You have a massive toe post in the back, super solid. Uh, you have this grip decking everywhere. It's just uh, it's a super solid work boat. It's, it's what you'd expect. All right, so at the back of the boat, we see this is a glycol fill cap, and that is for that is because these motors here are higher powered motors. They require cooling. So there's a heat exchanger uh, and you have this access right here is really convenient. So right back here, we have storage space and we also have access to the charger. Up at the bow, you have this big storage container. Also up at the bow, you have these big rubber bumpers. So you can load up, you can put people on the dock, you can nose up to any kind of construction project you have going on. And you also have this enclosed cabin, which is really nice if it's cold weather, uh, protects you from the elements. You have this great grip decking everywhere. It seems that a lot of newer companies that are getting into the electric boat market are going recreational. So why choose to build an electric work boat? Yeah, I mean, so I'm a recreational boater. Uh, I, I normally boating on this river with, you know, with my friends, with my family. Uh, I think that it would be great uh, to have a world where recreational boaters go electric. Uh, that being said, it's an emotional decision to, to pay for a battery system, an electric motor. Uh, if, if you're a recreational boater, you're, you're driven by interest rates and the payback periods might not make sense. Uh, sadly, there are no incentives for uh, a, a recreational boat uh, to be converted to electric. Uh, but the same is true on the commercial side. On the commercial side, you're seeing regulatory pressures, uh, particularly in states like California, uh, to go uh, electric. Uh, or, or cleaner propulsion, and you're also seeing the incentive stack uh, to support that. So uh, we've been a party to a number of uh, state and federal contracts that are uh, coming up that are specifically designed around port uh, electrification, and we think that that's an excellent beachhead for electrification given the characteristics of the vessels, but also the uh, incentives and usage patterns of those boats. Thanks for joining us for another electric boat test. We'll see you next time.